All right, so this is basically a map of uh, Baro Canal, and uh, this is uh, basically the landing on the 7th of August. The first and the fifth Marines when they landed, this is Lunga Point. Mm -hmm. And it's right down there. Yeah. And Lunga is there, that's exactly. uh, Lunga Point, and this is basically the Kuakidi Bay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the Americans took they, the airstrip. Yeah, they secured the airstrip. And uh, the Japanese, they landed this way, and then they move up south. So this is basically south from here. Mm -hmm. And then they attack. They do several attacks uh, at Henderson. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's all failed attacks. So uh, they send in more men, but they landed on the western side. Over there, yeah. So basically, that's yeah. the western side, exactly. uh, Savo. So uh, between uh, Guadalcanal and Savo, this is the iron bottom sound, so equal number of Japanese and American ships have been sank there. So we're now visiting the big American memorial in Honiara, the capital of Solomon Islands, on the island of Guadalcanal. And uh, every one of these um, walls behind me is pointing out one strategic or important battle during this campaign in 1942. Here's the big memorial behind me with the American and the Solomon flag. This place is cool because you can actually see many different important um, places of the battle from this hill. You will see the landing point over there and the airstrip is right behind this um, hill but also on the other side looking up through the hills when the Japanese wanted to retake the airfield, they sent in troops, they landed in the east and west, and they came on these hills running over, trying to break through the American lines. So behind me here is the Seahorse Hill, the Galloping Horse Hill, and this one specifically made famous for the broader public in the movie The Thin Red Line. So welcome to the Vilu War Museum. Despite the mosquitoes, this is a wonderful place if you're into military history because the guy who started this museum had a tractor and he started collecting the stuff around the island, pulling it over here and creating a museum like this. Japanese cannon, for example. And as we walk around here, I'm going to show you a couple of the finest examples of airplanes and cannons that were found on this island after the war. Velo, warm to see. The Wildcat, this the Christmas uh, camera. Don't less, the dive bomber, yeah? Yes. Oh, yeah, and that's the um, Wildcat. This? Cooking. Oh, cooking. To make sushi. <laughs> Can you cook something now? <laughs> <laughs> this is the Japanese field gun, right? Yes. Yeah. Still working after yeah. 70, how many years is it? 82 years. 82 years, 82 years yeah. yeah. Oh, the 50 cal. 50 cal is wow. still there. Nine yards of ammunition mm -hmm. for one. Oh, the rubber. 
rubber tank is still there. Yeah. What's the name of the plane again? It's Lightning. P38 Locket Lightning. P38 Locket Lightning. And then it was a V8 engine. You could work on a aircraft carrier with those skills, man. <laughs> they, they still have to wind up to wind them up. So, another interesting thing about the battle for Guadalcanal is, of course, the Battle of the Coral Sea. This uh, strait was the site of a major sea battle. So everywhere you go here, basically, there will be different battleships laying around. So it's an El Dorado for divers. Check this one out. It's a Japanese cargo ship, Bonegi 1. right there on the beach. So behind me is the monument of the Battle of the Bloody Ridge, 12th to the 14th of September in 1942. So it was difficult to explain what happened, but as the Americans came here to Guadalcanal to take over the airfield, Henderson Airfield down there, they had to secure a parameter around the airfield. Japanese weren't happy about this, of course, so they brought in a landing force from over there, which is east and on the other side, west, and walked around in the mountains, in the bushes, in the grass, in the, with the malaria flies, and attacked from the south this direction. So the Americans were waiting for them up here on the hill and a vicious and historical battle took place, hence this other memorial stone. Foxhole. Yeah. Somebody calls himself Mountain Joe. He came back after the war, I don't know, but not years after the war. He was in the mid-90s. He came back, um, came up to Blair Ridge, and he was, then he said, from where I was standing, I could see Lunga River, mm -hmm. I could see Hill down there. One. Um, and that's hill number one there, yep. hill number two. And I said, on my, on my back, so I could see Henderson Field, and I could see Fighter 2 Airship, I could see Savo Island. 
and, you, and, and it's I'm all there. Behind, and I'm behind a gun emplacement. So the Japanese would attack during the night, and uh, they can't tell where they were attacking from. So I had to pull back here, and from here, you could see where the Japanese attacking. And here, I said to uh, me, they, they came as close as hand to hand fighting. And uh, it was said, uh, this is the, sec uh, the second assault the Japanese had on the Americans. And it was, it was said that this is the second and the final assault. And this is the turning point on the Battle of Guadalcanal, where we are standing on. This is where, after this one here, it's the Americans and the Allies getting onto the Japanese. So this was the turning point. Historical ground. Yeah, it is. That means going that way is where John Basilon. This yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. John Basilon got his Medal of Honor. John Basilon on the, the TV series, uh, The Pacific. Yeah. It's based here on the Battle of, uh, it's a, it's another battle. It's known as probably the Battle of Hendi uh, for Henderson, where John Basilon got his Medal of Honor. He was, uh, that's exactly where he got his Medal of Honor. All right, that's so I'm it. filming Alligator Creek, made famous in one of the episodes in the Pacific. So welcome to Alligator Creek. One and a half weeks after the uh, Americans landing on the American landing here on Guadalcanal, Japanese counterattacked from back here and reached this river the Alligator Creek, made famous in the HBO series, The Pacific. So this is how it looks like today, Alligator Creek. Sorry. Uh, it's, it's just a game, you know, so. Uh, yeah, Xbox. Yeah, uh, Battle of Honor, front line. And at the end of the game, uh, like we were looking for someone to be used as Jago Vuza, because uh, uh, back then I, I had an Afro. Okay, and it was the end of the day, it was uh, the last day, and I was scruffy, and they said, uh, they said, why don't we just use your photo to, uh, we use as Jacob Wooza in the game. So, so they, at the end, so they, you are famous they took my photo Xbox to be used as Jacob Wooza. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah. But they came here to Alligator Creek to, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah to see the real to be a, to be a, Exactly. All right. So one thing that made it really difficult for uh, the soldiers, both the Japanese and the American soldiers on Guadalcanal is this type of grass. It's covering the island and when you touch it, it's super sharp, like knife edges. So can you imagine running through this? That's why there were also very close encounters between the enemy uh, combatants. There's still lots of unexploded bombs in the area, so they're digging out here. And as you can see, they have they find old stuff sitting around in the forest here all the time. And there are some nice street ducks. Come down. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the set. Okay, scratch, scratchy, scratchy. General Vanek will decide to name this runway after him. He was actually killed in the Battle of Midway. I guess you do know where Midway is. Yeah, so this was laid by his brother, Brigadier Frederick P. Henderson. He came back in 1995 and with his three sons, Lofton, Frederick and William, Bill. Um, those three sons um, come along with John Basil and we talked about him. John Basil up on the Bloody Ridge, mm -hmm. here. Um, if you ever landed on a in Port Vila, you land on the Bauer Field. It's still not the major Vila Maro Bauer. I just remember that idea. Yeah. Jefferson D. Blank, and he came back in, 19, uh, in 2002 uh, with the help of the actor.